thank you, Lord, that you're blessing them with a good time there. And Chris gets to see the things he gets to see there. And we ask you for Calvin's knee, Lord, that you would heal it quickly so he can get back to his active, de- active duties. And we thank you, Lord, for the night. Thank you for our guests. We ask you to bless them as they give us their presentation. And uh, thank you, Lord, that they're able to come here. And all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you introduce you to a couple of guys here? There's Greg Patch. And he's with the, these guys are with the uh, Gideon International. They're going to come up and tell us a little bit about what they do. And they're local guys from the church right down the street. And uh, Greg was like, oh. and, and his friend is Tony. So let me see. This is the first time I've ever had to use a mic. So can everybody hear me? I, I hope. Um, yeah, my name is Greg Patch. I am a, a volunteer with the Gideon's organization, Gideon's International, which you probably would know as the term Gideon's. Uh, Before I get into some of the things that I'm going to talk about, we have two videos. Uh, So we're going to show you two. One is a testimony of often is the case. You hand a Bible to somebody. You may not know what happens until you get to the pearly gates of what happened to that Bible that got handed out. One of the things I love about the Gideon's is we get a lot of the testimonies of the power of God's word in somebody's hand. So that'll be the first video. And then the second one's a little bit more about the organization, and then I'll talk after that. So with that, I guess we'll we'll let her rip. My story begins February of 1967. I got drafted in the United States Army. I was 21. We all went into this big room um, where you take the oath of, oath of service. And uh, there was a man standing by a table near the exit with stacks of little books. And as we filed past him, he offered us books. They were Gideon New Testaments with Psalms and Proverbs. And I took one. I wasn't a Christian, but I believed in God. I describe myself as a Romans 1 believer. I mean, I could look up into the heavens and see nature around me and realize that it didn't all create itself. Um, I had nine weeks of basic training and then nine weeks of advanced training in infantry and had 19 days leave. Well, during that leave, uh, before I was shipped to Vietnam, and uh, during that time I visited family and friends and my best friend's mother introduced me to the 91st Psalm. And I read that psalm, and it grabbed a hold of me and wouldn't let go. Um, The 91st Psalm has some amazing statements in it and promises. And um, they stood in juxtaposition to the anxiety and fears that I had because I knew that probably some bad stuff lay ahead. So I I kept that uh, Gideon New Testament in my breast pocket in Vietnam in a waterproof bag. And whenever I was fearful or or had some time, I was anxious, I'd take it out, I'd read the 91st Psalm, and it never failed to calm my fears and comfort me. I read it over and over and over again. On the night of January 30th, I was on listening post now, at night, whenever we were in perimeter, and defensive perimeter, we sent out listening posts, three men in a radio from each platoon out, out in front of the perimeter. And it was our job to try to detect enemy infiltration, trying to sneak in at night. A little before midnight, um, I heard the ambush patrol call in. They had a starlight scope. It lights up the night um, with infrared technology, and they are able to see. And... Uh, I heard them call in whispered tones. They observed a large North Vietnamese force was approaching their ambush site, approaching the perimeter, walking alongside the road. And I believe it went like this, 50, 100, 150, 200, as they more and more soldiers came into their site. That was the night of January 30th that the the ambush was, uh, when they attacked. During the uh, um, brief battle, I was wondering, where is the artillery? Where are, I mean, are the helicopter gunships? Where are the jet fighters? 
normally, if a base is under attack, you'd have all those assets would come, immediately come to your aid and start putting ordnance on the enemy positions, and we had none. And the next morning, um, we sent out recon patrols, I think three or four recon patrols. So we uh, started patrolling that day, and everybody was tired, a major sleep deficit for everyone. And uh, we were in the dense jungle. The jungle there was very dense, and the going was tough. And we were, went right through the middle of this uh, open area. Actually, it was in the center of the open area. It was a shallow pond, and it was dry in the dry season. And a circular pond, and around the pond was about 25 yards, 25 meters of six-inch grass and then dense jungle. We walked right through the middle. The point man descended the slope of the pond, walked through the middle. He ascended the slope on the other side. And a curious thing, one single coil of GI concertina wire on the lip of the pond. I, I remember thinking, what on earth is this wire doing way out here in the middle of nowhere? Major red flag should have been waving. The point man stepped across the wire. I stepped across the wire. And then the jungle erupted. And I knew that my time to die had come. Um, I'm firing one grenade after another. The North Mies are firing. And RPG explosions start exploding right in front of me, just a few feet away. And I believe four or five rounds landed right in front of me, any one of them close enough to blow me away. And I felt nothing. No blast, no flying dirt, nothing. And the shooting's going on, I'm firing and they're firing out, and nothing is hitting me. I realized that the 91st Psalm was coming literally true by the mercy and grace of God. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, for the arrow that flieth by day. For he shall give his angels charge him to keep thee in all thy ways. And it, God was granting me a miracle. We searched the bodies. Um, the, one of the soldiers was very young. They drafted them at 15 in North Vietnam. And this young man could have been 15. And he had a wallet in his pocket, uh, and in his wallet was a picture of his mother and sister. They had their arms around each other, smiling. And I realized that we killed him and we'd never see him again or know what happened to him. I just felt tremendous compassion for him because he was young. And it was a great lesson in the futility of war for me. I realized that war is necessary at times, but it's always a terrible thing, the loss of life, especially the loss of innocent life. But it was a great lesson for me because later, when I started reading and studying the Bible, it was an example of how to love an enemy. Always in the back of my mind was what happened on January 31st. The fact that I had been, my life had been spared by a miracle. I realized that um, if the 91st Psalm was true in such exact detail, the rest of the Bible had to be true as well. And so as I read the Bible over a period of time, I became convicted of my sins and uh, pruned sinful behavior out of my life uh, one branch at a time. And I've tried to live my life by um, the Ten Commandments and the counsel of the Word of God. If I hadn't had that little pocket New Testament, I would have been reading it all those days. And uh, that man that gave his time to be at the induction center in Circus, New York. I give thanks for that man who gave his time. I give thanks for the person that gave the dollar to purchase that Gideon Testament. And I give thanks to uh, our God who's faithful to his word and redeemed my life from destruction by a Red Sea miracle, a life-changing miracle.
Every Sunday, churches open their doors to communities around the world for people to fellowship, to worship, to grow, and to renew their spirits with the hope found only in the Word of God. But for many, Sunday is a day like any other. That's where the Gideons come in. As a missionary extension of the church, Gideons meet people where they are by placing Bibles in the traffic lanes of life and by personally sharing the message of true hope with the weary traveler, the sick and discouraged, with all generations, in small towns and in major cities, across time zones and countrysides and to the ends of the earth. So men, women, boys and girls can learn who they are in Christ and experience life as children of God. Gideons have never done this work alone. It's churches, just like yours, who make their work powerful and effective in different cultures and languages throughout some 200 countries, territories, and possessions across the globe. Gideons are members of churches first, dependent on God's people for support through prayer, giving, and a growing membership. Because in the end, we're all carrying out one vision, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel to bring people to Christ. Just if you're ever interested, if you go to the Gideon International website, they have a lot of these different videos that uh, talk about many of the people whose lives are changed. Um, so often when we do these presentations in church, I am sometimes somebody will come up after and said, you know what, my first Gideon Bible was from somebody that you handed out. Now, I will tell you that we came here with, in the event we could not do the video, that I had to be able to kind of repeat some of that, so you're going to have to forgive me. I, I will say one thing. I am so pleased to see young people here. I would just tell you that uh, uh, I am so glad to see you young people here, and, uh, you know, it's just nice to see young men of God and young women of God. But, but anyhow, so uh, let me just kind of go through this. So obviously the objective of the Gideon organization is to win others to the Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously we are called, all of us are called, enabled by God to send by God to share the gospel to the lost and the people of the world. Uh, we do our part, uh, some plant, some water, uh, but God gives the increase. Uh, I like that the Thessalonians 2.4 which says, we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please men, but to please God. Now, I know many of you are probably first familiar with the idea of the Gideons in the hotel room and what you saw in here is, believe it or not, that's only 2% of the ministry. 2% of the ministry is putting the hotels, uh, Bibles in those hotels. Uh, the vast majority of the ministry is that each individual Gideon uh, will have their Bibles and it's to go out and witness to the world. You saw through that video, we stand on street corners, we go wherever the people are and we try to get God's word in their hand. And if we have the opportunity to testify to them, that's even better. But even if they take it with them, just like this gentleman talked before, they just handed it to him and off he went, and I'll let God do the rest. Um, so, again, the other idea is that 2%, um, as he mentioned here, we spread God's word over 200 countries around the world. Now, in 2019, we distributed over 91 million copies of God's word uh, that is printed in over 100 different languages. Uh, and the men and women of the Gideon's organization hand the Bible out every two seconds around the world. So every two seconds there's a Bible going out. Uh, we are one of the world's largest 
non-denominational non organizations with over 300,000 members. So around the world, there are 300,000 Gideons that are members trying to do God's work. Um, now, I know many of you participate, participated in maybe a mission trip. Uh, I have. I've gone to places where they didn't understand a word I said. Even though we had been trained, we went to uh, Thailand on one, uh, one occasion, and I was supposed to say, Mien Fei Songani and Se Jen, which means this is a free gift I give you. It's a Bible, and when I said it, they kind of went, what did this guy say? You know, you just, uh, it just didn't work too well. But anyhow, that's one of the reasons I became a Gideon. When I came back, I wanted to get God's word in the hands of people because even though I couldn't speak the language, I knew God could. Um, now, one of my favorite passages, so neither one who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. And that's really a strong believer, and I'll especially say for you uh, young folks, um, you know, God is our Heavenly Father, and he will instruct us all in the ways of life. And that has been a big part of my life. Um, so, so let's see here. So we talked about around the world. So a little bit about the Gideons. Um, to give you an idea, this is the hotel Bible. So this is the Bible that we place in the hotel rooms. Each one of these Bibles has some introduction. It always has, if you're in time of need, maybe a passage. Most Gideon Bibles will also have the end. So these cost six fifty, and they're in boxes of twenty five, and so that's like one hundred and sixty two dollars. And this is kind of what the boxes we get. But you also may be familiar. Um, these are the smaller Bibles that we hand out. And in fact, just across the street at the middle school, we handed out 240 of these. And very similar, this has got the New Testament, but it's got Psalms and Proverbs in it. And again, it has in the back of each one of these, it will have the plan of salvation, which somebody can read, and we will walk them through that. These are now $1.65, so a case of 100 is like a, you know, about 165 Obviously, when we say we print them, I went on a mission trip to Moscow. So again, we were handing out the very same thing in Russian. Uh, and again, they do it all around the world. Um, so anyhow, I guess the question is, is so how, how do folks support the Gideon organization? And quite honestly, the Gideon organization, all of the Bibles are funded through our relationship with local churches. That is how, and there's one other thing I'll get to in a minute, but it is through the local churches. But there's other ways that the local churches support the Gideons. And I'll kind of, um, you know, again, it's, it, I want you to think about all the Bibles that were handed out were handed out because of contributions of churches and individuals. And, of course, some of the membership. But just to give an idea of what we have recently done, uh, in beginning of 2023, our campus handed out 900 small New Testaments to uh, students in five middle schools, one being right across the street. Um, we had also placed 750 Bibles over at the LBJ Hospital. We regularly support all the hospitals, all of the chaplains. And we had stocked a number of different hotels here. There's a new one that just went up on uh, North Park. Tony and I were out today, handed out 370 Bibles uh, to the hotels that are in our area. And we distributed 550 Bibles uh, to the local prison here in Atascadero. So we do that mission work there. And so again, I know everybody thinks of it as the Bible in the hotel room that is a 2% of the total ministry. So I guess the question is, how do people support the ministry? The first one is prayer. And if you will think of prayers uh, from men and women all around the world to spread the gospel, that's what we pray for, that the gospel will move forward. Uh, prayers for the local camps. Do realize many of the Gideon camps are in areas where Christianity is not allowed and they do that at great risk. So we pray for all of our Gideon members all around the world. Um, we pray that every Bible that we hand out which touch the lives of those people. And so many stories of someone in a hotel, uh, their wife kicked them out, uh, they're suicidal, um, they've just been turned, told some terminal condition. They reach in to reach those Bibles and those Bibles talk to them. I'm always amazed to listen to what passage that person opened the Bible and said right then and there, I knew God was talking to me because I'm often going, really, that's the passage? Okay, well, not for me to judge. Um, the second one um, I have for more church members to step forward and be a part of a Gideon organization. Um, you know, the Lord said in Matthew 9, 37, 38, the harvest is plentiful, 
but the workers are few, and that's true in almost any ministry that's out there. So we're always looking for professional men that would like to join the organization, and if there's anyone that has any questions on how to join, uh, just let me know. Uh, Tony and I are actually in the same Bible class at our church, and Tony, of course, is, is, tends to be us retirees. He's semi-retired. Uh, he asked that he wanted to be a Gideon too, and in our, in our group, uh, we talk about what we've been doing We'll ask for our life group to pray for maybe an event like this. And then lastly is through financial giving. Um, the one thing that we're going to be handing out, uh, we will be handing out uh, one of these brochures. If you would, um, especially even young folks, uh, please take these home. It does explain the Gideon organization in it. And if you're so moved and then through prayer, you want to make a donation, you can put a check in the envelope and send it. And the only thing that I would ask, if you would, if you didn't, bring it back. Because we'll ask the pastor if he would keep some of those. Because in some cases, it's actually the church that says, we want you to be a part of our mission. And we will include you in some of the things that we do in our mission group to support that. Um, so I guess in closing, uh, the only other thing I would say, and this is something else, the Gideons have a Gideon card program. Now, some churches allow us to put one in the back. But I will say this, that if, say, it's Christmas, if you wanted to go to the Gideon Connection, just go Gideon International, you could order all of the Christmas cards you want through the Gideon organization. You could purchase them, and in those cards you want to make a donation, you can make a donation. The only reason I bring this up is because 25% of the money raised through the Gideons is people buying Gideon cards. I would say that. People getting Gideon, Gideon cards and making a donation. So that's just another way. Now, just so you know, uh, this one here is the pastor and thanking him for being the pastor. So I'm going to give you guys that one just in case when he comes back you want to give him that. Uh, but that's what we have there. Um, but anyhow, I think that's it. But again, I wanted to thank you for allowing us to do this presentation. We wanted to let you guys know a little bit more about the Gideon organization. Um, again, I know most of you are familiar with them through the, the hotel, but I hope you'll consider supporting us in the future. So thank you very much. That's The, uh, it was, it's about 110 years old, and there were two businessmen that were always in hotels, and they were always looking for something to read, both Christian men, and they came up with the notion that maybe we ought to start putting Bibles in hotels, and that goes, I think it was in 1910. In fact, it's interesting, they just now put together a 200-page book, kind of the history of the Gideons, but that is how the ministry actually first started. It started in one town, it grew to the next one, and then it grew further, and then it further expanded to say, aside from the hotels, you know, their, their mission was to spread God's word all over the world. And that's how it really kind of got started. And see, I am one of those believers. I, I, I don't quote the specific passage, but it says that the Lord will bring all things to your remembrance, that which I have taught you. And I've always said, where is it that God can tell me, bring to my remembrance what he taught me? It's God's word. And for me, that is how often, how often God speaks to me, is he brings a passage to mind. Well, you don't know the passage, so you need to read God's word. You need to be involved in that and let him touch your heart. But that's, uh, but that's how it started. That's how it started. And again, it's 110 years old, and we have 300,000 members, all volunteers. Well, I'll say not all volunteers, but most of us are, are Tony and I are volunteers in our church. Uh, and we're always looking for members. We're, you know, it is so true that uh, you know the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So, any anyone else got a question? It's usually New King James. Yeah, it's New King James. And then again, it's, uh, it's in over 200 languages. Now, the one thing that I do have, if anyone was interested, I do have, if you want to do the card, you can download the Gideon's Bible. I mean, they're just New, new King James versions. But it's in 100 languages. So if you happen to run into somebody who maybe doesn't speak or read English very well, you can ask him what language he's in, and you can flip that language and show him the passage that you wanted to show him. Uh, 
So if anyone's interested in those, this is not my technology. I'm not the, but again, it is a little Gideon card app. So you know, young people would be a little more attuned to that. Somehow you can take a picture of that and it loads up and you've got every language you could imagine in the Bible. So if anyone wants one, you can see me afterwards. Any, anything else? Again, thank you so much for allowing us to do this presentation. Thank you. And I'll try to de-mic myself. Thanks for, thanks for coming. And uh, we can put some of these, if you like, out in our little display case out front there, too. To sure. Okay. Well, that's great. Now we know we have some local Gideons here. We didn't, I didn't know how many we had in the area. How many of you guys are working in the area? In 52, wow. Fantastic. We'll be praying for you guys. All right. Um, we'll pray, and then we'll be done a little bit early tonight. We thank you, Father, for bringing these men here to show us the work they're doing. Uh, we ask you to bless their work, Lord, in our area and wherever else they go. Lord, bless the, the Bibles that they leave out, Lord. Let them touch somebody's life, change lives, Lord, like that, that man, the first, the first testimony was, uh, was amazing to watch. Thank you, Lord, for that testimony. And uh, I ask you to bless everybody here in Jesus' name. Amen.